I've always wanted a flight simulator cockpit, and now that this technology is fairly cheap, I thought I'd build one myself. So this is a woodworking channel, so I'm just going to go over the build of how I made this cockpit, but here's some of the hardware I'm using. I have the Logitech G Pro Flight Yoke with the accompanying thrower quadrant. The Logitech Flight Switch Panel. The Logitech Flight Multi Panel. The Elgato Stream Deck XL, which is 32 customizable hockey buttons. An old iPad, which I'm gonna use for flight charts. And all of this connects to a 15 port powered USB hub. The good thing about using all Logitech products is that they come with these small screws with rubber grommets. These let you configure this in any way you want. I wasn't totally convinced that I could eyeball this, so I cut some scrap plywood from my heavy duty flip top table build to use as the base. I'm going to be kerf bending some plywood here. There's hundreds of videos on YouTube for this, so I am definitely not the person to be taking advice from, but I'll show you how I did it. Scouring some forums, I found this website called blocklayer.com that'll calculate the bend angle depending on your requirements. As I've never done this before, I'm gonna be cutting four scrap pieces of plywood to try and dial this in. The website doesn't tell you how deep to cut and there's a lot of debate around this between woodworkers. So I'm gonna go just before the last layer. If you do decide to use this template, the spacing between cuts is calculated between the center line, not to the left or to the right. So it's a little hard to get used to. I messed up the calculations more than a little. When inputting the data, I put in a thinner kerf blade. That's why it overextended. Not convinced I completely fixed my error. I still cut as many pieces as I could, just in case I messed this one up too. I've made this mistake, so you don't have to. I use some glue. Well, a lot of glue. Well, too much glue. I wasn't sure how this would hold up, so I drowned it. I thought, well, anything can be fixed with sanding. This actually took me a lot of sanding, over half an hour for each corner. Now I said, each corner because clearly I didn't learn from my mistake. I did it again. I'm using my fence here as a guide to get that 90 degree bend and it honestly wasn't too hard to clean up with some coarse sandpaper. giving my flip top workbench some love. The link for that video is in the description. I intentionally cut this oversize because I wasn't sure how it's going to work and I can just cut it to level. You can always cover these kerf cuts with some putty or a veneer. Me, I kind of like it.
I'll give this a solid round over now. You can always use sandpaper. The backboard is just some thin plywood. I'll trim it up on the bandsaw. A pro tip to get cheap paint is go to the paint section of your hardware store. Ask them if they have any color mismatch. This tin retails for about $35. Picked it up for $2. This thing's gonna carry a little bit of weight, so I'm gonna add as many nails as I can to tie this thing together. I intentionally cut the backboard a little oversized on the bandsaw because it's much easier to clean up with the router. As my computer mouse is going to be on this surface, I gave it six coats of water-based clear, sanding up to 600 grit. I'm using blue tack or what some people might call flexible adhesive, but it works really well. Been using it for weeks and hasn't moved. IKEA had some pretty cheap LED strip lighting, so I'll use this. I need somewhere to route the wires and I do not trust spade bits. I'm using a heavy amount of tape, going low and slow, hoping I don't get any chip outs. I initially started using this cloth tape what some people might call gaffer tape, as a placeholder, it actually turned out to hold really well. And as I don't see this, I'm gonna use a lot of it. So I'm sorry if this is a neat, it works. With the setup complete, we can test this out. After installing the relevant drivers, I am so happy with this. I can lift it up and remove it from my desk. I don't have to plug individual hardware in. It makes it so much neater. It sits over my monitor, but that's fine. All my control panels are sitting in this cockpit could not be happier. All the links to the hardware I've used, including the Kerf spacing calculator, is in the description. Thanks for watching.